Thanks for staying, Anton. I expected you were going to leave when everyone else did. I thought I'd stick around for a bit. Gives us an opportunity to talk. This must be your local pub. They seem to know you pretty well. Yeah, I live nearby. We usually wind up the week here. Are you on call tonight? I notice you've been on your phone quite a bit, more than anyone else was. <laughs> well, I just uh, use social media a lot. What kind of things do you post? Well, what's ever on my mind. I uploaded a few photos of us here tonight. Who are they for? Anyone who wants to look at them. Uh, the people here tonight. I've uploaded a few shots of each of our pub nights since we started coming here. Wouldn't it be more direct to just send them to who was here? Well, posting them to Instagram is easier. Why does it matter? We're not doing anything wrong here. No, it didn't seem like it. Is it something to advertise to the world, though? I don't see it that way. It isn't anything bad, so I've got nothing to hide. I guess not. But you know, there have been many situations where people haven't been allowed to keep their private business private. What are you referring to? If you know 20th century history, among the atrocities committed by the communist authorities in the Soviet Union era was internal spying. A simple web search for any variation of Soviet Union and spying will return numerous accounts of surveillance imposed upon citizens of Russia and other former republics. It was done not only by the KGB and Stasi, the East German Ministry for State Security, but also by encouraged citizens and family members against each other. That was communism. We don't have that. The name of the political system was communism, but regardless of its name, human nature will take advantage of others if there's an opportunity, especially if it's willingly offered. That wasn't the case in your example. If I understand that period correctly, it was a brutal regime led by Stalin until his death. The citizens didn't exactly ask to be brutalized. That's true, but they did usher in the communist society, which by design eliminated the rights of the individual. Once the abuses were entrenched, no one came along and picked up the lost liberties and said, Excuse me, citizens, I think you dropped this. <laughs> Here's another example from our society I remember my grandfather mentioning. In the early days of landline telephone service, people used what was called a party line. A number of households shared one phone number and its cost, but it also created the opportunity for the community eavesdropper to listen in on others' calls. A common scenario went like this. Hello? followed by a bit of conversation and just a moment the calls for me mrs whomever then there'd be a telltale click as the nosy neighbor hung up the conversation would then resume in private or sometimes still not is that different from discussing personal business on a social media site here's another example you've probably heard about in 1972 Five men connected to the Republican Party in the U.S. were arrested and charged with breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters in the Watergate Hotel. Eventually, the president, Nixon, had to resign, and he'd won 49 of 50 states in the previous election, I believe. Why are you mentioning all this stuff? <laughs> Rob, X-ray machines have been in use for scanning luggage at airports for decades. You must know that because each year you leave the country on vacation and publicize it in your social media before, during, and after. In 2009, over 150 American airports began using backscatter x-ray devices that were described as non-invasive and privacy respecting. Yet, lots of examples of virtual nakedness, targeted scanning, and the sharing of images between PSA staff were publicized. After enough outrage from the public, they replaced all devices by 2013. Those were x-rays, not photos, and the passengers didn't upload them. The TSA just took them. True, but also just a few years ago, thousands of patients at the Rouge Valley Health System in southern Ontario were notified that their personal health records had been sold to providers of registered education savings plans or baby photographers. <laughs> I currently have no need for either of those. Does that make it any less of a violation? No, I guess not. In 2013, James Clapper, the Director of National Intelligence, was asked if the NSA collected any kind of data on Americans. Clapper answered, no sir, not wittingly. Then, during an intelligence hearing in 2014, Senator Mark Udall asked CIA Director John Brennan if he could, quote, assure the committee that the CIA does not conduct domestic spying and searches. Brennan replied, 
I can assure the committee that the CIA follows the letter and the spirit of the law in terms of what the CIA's authorities are, in terms of its responsibilities to collect intelligence that will keep this country safe. But just a few months later, a Washington Post headline read, CIA Director John Brennan apologizes for search of Senate committee's computer. But realistically, spying and surveillance is their business, supposedly in the name of national security. Surely you must believe that's the objective and result, at least most of the time. Yes, I think so. However, as I mentioned earlier, they are people, not guardian angels, and people will take advantage when an opportunity appears, especially if they can find a way to rationalize it. Why are you so concerned about me? Who did you come here with? Do you even work at our company? Yes, we work for the same company. What department? Head office. So you came to see me? Yes. You've recently applied for another position, is that correct? Yes. You're being considered for the position, but there are a few matters that need attention. As you know, the position you've applied for requires a higher security clearance. One of the things we look at is the candidate's social media posting. And I have to be frank, we're concerned by the amount of personal information you share with the world. But that's because I have nothing to hide. If you look through my postings, and it sounds like you have, You'll see that I never post anything that's illegal or even inappropriate. So why should I care if anyone, even the government or police, look through my postings? I don't do anything wrong, so I really don't see what the problem is. That's not the only consideration. We've noticed the occasional reference to the company, and specifically projects you've been working on. The volume of information you've posted about yourself in social media is significant. You could possibly create the conditions for someone to impersonate you at one of our sites or our customers. Also, some bits of information could be of interest to our competitors or foreign governments. This is all coming as a surprise, but you're serious. I am. If we didn't value your talent as we do, I wouldn't be here and you would have been excluded from consideration. This is a bit dated, but 7% of Americans age 16 or older were victim of identity theft in 2012. That's more than 21 million people. Much of the exploited personal information comes from social media. Each of the examples I mentioned demonstrate abuses of privacy. The motivations might have been noble cause, or hubris, or just selfish gain. But they couldn't have been judged an abuse of privacy if there hadn't been an expectation of it. Do we presume the hospital patients objected to their records being distributed because they had something to hide? No, I, I wouldn't say so. Virtually every day we take measures to protect our privacy. Our electronic accounts have a password, we close the curtains in our bedroom, and try not to tip our cards playing Texas Hold'em. Before the internet was big, if the Postal Service had offered free stamps in exchange for the right to open and copy the contents of the mail you sent to receive, would you have taken them up on that offer? Probably not. I doubt most people would have. You stated that you have nothing to hide based on posting nothing illegal or regrettable, correct? Correct, that I'm aware of. Continuous documentation of your life for the hypothetical interest of others is your right. But if you believe you have nothing to hide, you're really stating you have nothing to protect. Even if you believe that about yourself, your postings are going to include details about other people and organizations who may not share your enthusiasm for self-surveillance. All right, I get your point. I hope so, Rob. It's hard enough keeping the bad guys away from company information without it leaking out the back door through staff's social media account. Okay, I'll try to be more careful about what I post going forward. It may take a little adjustment. Old habits die hard. I'm confident you won't forget.